What's going on guys? Today we're going to look at my Light Armor Magic Templar PvP build and what I've been running for the current patch Markarth. Overall, I think Magpar is definitely in a good spot for open world PvP. With everyone being in heavy armor with high resistances, this makes Magic Templar a very viable 1vx class, especially with the amount of penetration we are rocking on this spec. Now the build concept I made when creating this is to dish out as much damage as possible while also being as tanky as I can be in Light Armor. I will note, if you get enough people on you, this build is kind of squishy. But I designed this build to 1vx 5-6 to six players at maximum. It can quickly take out targets fast and hold its own for the most part. But if you get swarmed by a bunch of people, it's going to be really hard to survive. But the, honestly, that's just what every build is going through right now. So it's, it's no different. So on this build, I run around in Cyrodiil, Imperial City, and Battlegrounds. Ideally, this is set up for CP PvP. But if you run in a decent four-man pre-made BG group, I don't really change anything at all. Uh, this build works great in Battlegrounds as well. So let's get into the stat sheet first. So we got 34k mag, 1474 magic recovery, almost 27,000 health. We have 2500 critical resistance. Um, our spell damage is decently high for not buffed, so we're definitely hitting hard with, that, with the spell damage. Um, our resistances are obviously low uh, for light armor. I mean, they're not low, but they're just low because I'm in light armor. I do have two setups. I have, do have a heavy armor setup and a light armor setup, and I'll show you guys both of those. So we are running the Atronach Mundestone, and then we are also running Bewitch Sugar Skulls Food. And for the consumables like potions and whatnot, we got Essence of Health, Tristat Pots. These pots are amazing for PvP. Uh, and then we also have Health Magic immovables um these potions are, are great as well i typically use these more than the tripods because i like to be able to you know do my burst combo without being stunned so this is definitely probably one of the best potions you can run on magic templar these two are amazing anyways so let's check it out the gear first so we got students on the front bar so this is a lightning staff we are running it sharpened and the shock damage enchant so let's check out what students does so students gives a two-piece spell damage and weapon damage obviously but i'm just speaking from the magicka perspective so a two-piece spell damage a three-piece spell penetration a four-piece spell damage and then when you deal damage to an enemy who is off balance your physical and spell penetration is increased by 5188 for 10 seconds now this is not fully gold so it'll go up i don't exactly know how much it is fully gold but um this is definitely the best front bar set all right, so there is a, a debate between Spinners and Stoon. Now, Stoon is better, in my opinion, because of the damage. Now, Spinners does give you a three-piece max magic, which does increase your healing on your back bar and increases some of your damage on your front bar. But the amount of penetration you get from Stoons is basically, I want to say, double the amount that you get from Spinners, meaning that people are running heavy armor right now so you need to have as much penetration as possible so in my opinion students is definitely better than spinners now the healing wise it's a different story but our other set that running on our back bar really negates that need for spinners for the one piece i mean it's, i mean you're talking about a one piece max magic on your back bar so i think spinners is not as good as students students is the best okay for the back bar we are running danger trickery we are running a resto staff on the back bar with the power trait and the weapon damage enchant. So Daisy Trickery gives a two-piece maximum health, a three-piece maximum stamina, a four-piece max mag, and a five-piece when you deal damage, you gain one of the five major random buffs for 21 seconds every nine seconds. So the eligible buffs are major expedition, major protection, major mending, major heroism, and major vitality. So when I was doing my top five crafted sets video, I didn't realize that they changed this around. If I had known that, then that set, this set would be there. This set is honestly amazing. The amount of buffs you get, I mean, so basically you have it for 21 seconds, okay? So every nine seconds, you get a new buff. That means at 18 seconds, you can have, for instance, major mending and major vitality, making your heals absolutely godlike. Your healing, you could probably crit heal a, 12k breath of life easy with those two buffs up especially since templars get minor mending when they use their i think they're they're one of their passives in their in their uh, restoring light tree they get eight percent extra healing so 
honestly and also you know jabs and you know the adric spear gives minor protection so you're getting minor and major protection sometimes you know together giving you i think a 15 percent damage reduction now this is that that would be the highest damage reduction that any class can get uh right now other than like necromancer but nobody runs this with necromancer so they might but that's just you know i think danger trickery is definitely a very very good option so now we're going to check out the monster set so i'm running engine guardian this is the best monster set i think for magic templar right now or at least for my build because the stamina and magic sustain is nice as i'm not running eternal vigor i could use some of the extra stats the healing on engine guardian is actually crazy too the healing is nuts um also this proc chance 25 percent chance you're hitting skills all the time your engine guardian will definitely proc every 10 seconds giving you extra resources i mean they're basically for free also engine guardian follows you around so it can take damage for you and can make you honestly very very tangy and when you're you know sprinting away from a group you your engine guardian is going to take some hits for you rather than you getting hit by sniper or whatever so engine guardian is definitely probably one of the best sets um to run right now so i do want to trade changes to divines i just don't have a lot of crystals right now so this is the only trait that's kind of off um so i have heavy chest on stunes i have a light head of engine guardian medium shoulders of engine guardian and we're running tri stat on the big pieces and magic on the smalls now if you wanted to min max this i think reinforced chest is the best now um it just gives you a lot more armor but i prefer divines because it buffs my munda stone and people may say oh you know m pins better while it could be better for defense i feel like i get more bonuses from my recovery to give me overall more sustain so i can run full damage on my jewelry and then and it's just my opinion i since the buff to divines and the buff to the atronach i think it's a no-brainer to get as much out of it as you can so we got a light head heavy chest now this is best in slot heavy chest obviously uh, we have medium shoulders, we have light belt, we have light hands, light legs, and light feet. So people will see I have, so the, I'm on my lightning staff bar right now, okay? So I have five pieces of stun on, and then I also have four pieces of data trickery. People will be like, oh, why aren't you running one piece trainee? Well, I don't think Templars benefit from trainee as much as they would a one piece max magic on the four piece of data trickery. So. I have the Deja Trickery boots, uh, the Deja Trickery belt, so that's two pieces, and then I have two jewelry. So I have both of these arcane, so this gives me four pieces on both bars, so when I bar swap, you'll see I have uh, four pieces, now I have six. So people would think it's kind of a waste, but I think this is more valuable than a one piece trainee, at least for Magic Templar. So maybe for like, you know, a warden or something like that, a one piece trainee is obviously going to be better. But for me, personally, I think oh, the, the four piece of nature trickery is more valuable. Now, this is all crafted, all crafted sets, you know, obviously, except for my engine guardian. So it's definitely easy to get. So uh, and you just have to have a crafter and you just have to get some, you know, digit, you have to get some zircon plating and whatnot. They're kind of expensive. I, I think they're like 20K, but uh, that's not too bad for making a build. OK, so full spell damage, full spell damage on the jewelry um and then we're running malakath so this is borderline aids i guess with malakath people say malakath's aids with proc sets people say it's aids without proc sets it doesn't really matter i'm in open world pvp so i could care less about what people think i'm running i'm running the best setup for me and what i prefer so malakath is definitely definitely a good option if you don't want to run malakath then pale order is another good option i think pale order would be really fun on this i want to try it out but I haven't trait changed it to infused yet. So I do prefer one infused on this. No more than that though, because I feel like your max magic will suffer. And it actually helps with your sustain because of, you know, your breath of or honor of the dead gives you, you know, 18% of the ability cost. So you can always have that ticking. The more max magic you have, the more you start with, the more uh, magic you'll have at the end of the fight. So that's what I'm running for gear wise. Um, if you want to run heavy armor, so you want to run heavy head of Engine Guardian, heavy chest, uh, I think heavy shoulders, light belt, and then I run medium hands of Stoon. 
uh, heavy legs of Stoon and then heavy feet of Stoon. Now, your damage you can go down, but you're, obviously your tankiness will go up. And some of your sustain will go down a little bit too. Um, and you obviously get a little bit more health. So, overall, it's up to you. Uh, I prefer the light armor setup, but it's all preference at that point. So here's my buff stat sheet. Uh, this is with continuous attack. This is on my lightning staff bar. So we have 2.2k magic recovery uh, and we have 3.5k, almost 3.6k spell damage. Um, also, we do have 19,000 spell penetration. Now this can go up. I'm not running major breach, uh, but you can run it if you want to. That's your preference. We'll get into skills here in a second, but I'm just kind of showing you, showing you my buff stat sheet. And for my back bar, I have 2.3k magic recovery. So this is on my resto bar. Um, stats pretty much the same. Uh, nothing crazy. So, all right. So now we're going to check out my skills. So on the front bar, we're running puncturing sweeps. Now this is your bread and butter main DPS skill. The skill doesn't heal for a ton, but um, the damage is decent. It's hard to land sometimes. So uh, it's kind of annoying, but it does the job for the next skill we have solar barrage now this skill is absolutely amazing this thing does so much damage in aoe it's actually nuts uh, and also empowers your light and heavy attacks now that alone is amazing because people don't realize how much damage that is like if you're hitting like a 3k light attack that's going to be buffed by 40 percent. so that's quite a bit of damage so overall this is one of the best skills and you want to make sure it's up 24 7 when you're trying to go burst some people next we have degeneration now this is your main spell damage buff it gives you a little bit of a dot and also increases your max magic as one of the major skill passives so honestly all in all it's a decent skill if you want to run spell damage pots you can and drop this but that's all up to you I prefer de degeneration just to give me the extra recovery and extra damage next we have the most fun skill in the game toppling charge this skill is absolutely amazing. It's so fast. You basically zoom around like Sonic, just toppling charging people. The stun is great. The off balance is even better because it goes right in the line with stuns. So it's very easy to keep up stuns just about 24 seven in an outnumbered scenario. And this stun is actually really good and it really hits hard, honestly. I've killed people on their mounts with toppling charge before, that's it. So that this skill definitely hits hard and it shouldn't be overlooked for damage wise. Next, we have Radiant Oppression. Now, this skill is very, very good when you're executing. It is amazing. When you get somebody low that's like a Dodge Roy Nightblade, now this is great. This is the best skill for Nightblade. Purifying Light is terrible now. Do not run it. Run this instead of Purifying Light because the damage is just absolutely nuts. Just crazy. Like, you can hit like 6k Radiance or more when you, when you get somebody low, and it just adds that extra pressure and you can burst them real quick for our ultimate we are running crescent sweep now this is a very very fun ultimate to use um i wish it didn't have the cast time but then a max just screws this over so um yeah so this ultimate is amazing it does amazing amount of damage aoe adds a dot around you for six seconds um and it pulses similar to how solar barrage works so all in all honestly this is the most fun ultimate i think in the game it slaps hard you know it nukes people and it gives you that little aoe around you so it's just a very very fun ultimate to use for the back bar we are running rapid regeneration now if you don't want to run this you can run living dark if you want or if you want to run sword and board with this you can run living dark if you want the reason why i run resto staff is because i can easily proc data trickery just by light attacking just to get the buff up um with running it on the back bar with like a sword and board or something is going to be hard to proc it uh, if you want to run this on an ice staff you can uh i don't prefer it so rapid regeneration is my first choice and if you don't like that then living dark isn't your next choice so next we have extended ritual this skill is amazing it cleanses you of five harmful effects and it the, de the heal is decent um nothing crazy it's just a very very good skill and you don't want to not run this on templar honestly next we have honor the dead this is your main heal when you're below 75% health, it restores 20, basically 20% of the ability's cost every two seconds over six seconds as magic. So, so you're getting like 600 magic every two seconds from using Honor of the Dead. And that'll give you right around 2000 um, 
2000 magic and this doesn't count as recovery so it's based that's why the recovery seems low but your sustain is actually very very high this gives you about 2000 magic um if you hit about the life or, or if you hit honor the dead while well, you're under 75 percent health so this skill is amazing the heal is pretty good uh especially with data trickery with mending up and whatnot next we have channel focus now this skill is your main you know defensive you know armor buff and it also gives you 240 magic recovery every one second so that adds to 480 magic recovery now this doesn't go on your stat sheet obviously so if you look at my recovery 1561 1561 still so this adds 480 recovery. So how recovery works is every two seconds. So you get 1561 recovery every two seconds. So this adds 480 right off the bat. So, I mean, 1561. So we're already at like 2000, we're already at 2000 magic recovery, just hitting rune focus. And you know, that doesn't even account for the cost reduction that we have in light armor. So these two skills add so much resource sustain that are, is unseen. It's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, for the next skill, we have Race Against Time. Now, people will be like, oh, why are you running Race Against Time? Won't you run Misform or, or this and that? The snare removal uh, and the movement speed is the, the main reason why I run it. Because you can't just be keep spamming cleanse 24-7. I mean, the cost of cleanse is 3,888. The cost of this is 2421. Um, you sometimes do get the major expedition buff from Danger Trickery. But this, if you have this up with like major mending and major vitality, I mean, you have three major buffs on your character consistently, um, but the snare removal is the main reason why I have this. Now, you could run Mistform if you want, but I'm not a vampire and I hate vampire. It just Mistform does not work. So don't be a vampire. Now, here's a controversial pick. So I have Barrier. I run Barrier because I like the magic recovery. Now, obviously, you could run Rest of Ultimate if you want. Now, probably it would get you more out of sticky situations but i prefer the extra magic recovery from the support passive um it gives you 10 percent more magic recovery so that's why i'm you know i match recovery to 1561 on my back bar and 1474. now with the potion and whatnot this gets very drastic difference like 100 or more recovery so that's kind of why i ran it there um but if you don't want to run that then obviously run rest to ultimate um so that's kind of the skill setup obviously so for passives uh, we have, you know, all of our Adric Spear, all of our Dawn's Wrath, and all of our Restoring Light. So we do have, uh, what is it? We do. So for the sake of ground, we have Minor Mending. Um, increases our healing done by 8%. With Major Mending, that's 16%. Giving us 24% extra healing done uh, if you have Major Mending up from DG Trickery. Also with uh, Protection. So we get minor protection whenever we use an Adric Spear ability. So that could be like, you know, jabs. So see, see the Adric, or see the um, protection right there. Also using Crescent Sweep or even Top and Charge. So you're basically a 15% damage reduction. About 80% of the time, 60% of the time with, um, you know, I mean, it's just a random chance to proc your Daedric, but it's often enough to at least mention it. So you have a 15% damage reduction with that. So there's the passives, so the Destro Staff, all of our passives. Now, if you don't like a Radiant Repression, I forgot to mention, you can run Elemental Drain. But the reason why I don't run it is it's so hard to hit in open world and it just gets so hectic. Now, this will increase your spell penetration by a ton. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll be slapping hard. That's mainly used for duels, but um, Radiant Repression is what I prefer in open world. So for the rest of staff, we have all of the passives. Light armor, all of the passives. Now the medium, you only really need the second one and the last one. Um, because these two require this one requires five piece. Um, and I don't really sneak a lot and I really can care less as I can, you know, save some skill points. And then you don't need weapon critical for a magic build because you don't have any weapons, like you just have staff. So um, and then I have you only need the first three in heavy armor, but that's if you run light, but if you run five heavy. Then obviously get all of your heavy passives. Fighters Guild, you just need to banish the wicked. Uh, this gives you ultimate whenever you kill it undead and Daedra. Mages Guild, all the passives, um, except for the first one. Now you could run Meteor if you don't like Crescent, but Crescent is the best ultimate in the game, so why wouldn't you run it? Um Sedic, all of the passives. Undaunted, your last 
you know, obviously those passives um and then you want your assault and support passives and we are a breton i don't know if i forgot to mention that but we are a breton um breton is probably the best race um nord is probably a close second for just because of the the armor and but not and then alchemy passives we obviously want the medicinal use to increase the potion effect um and that's really it for the passives um i guess we'll check out champion points that's the next right so we have 56 in the warlord 11 sprinter 4 siphoner 4 bashing focus 83 arcanist 56 tumbling and 56 shadow ward 49 bless that really beefs up your healing even more uh, Elfborn is 11 points because we do not because we're, we're running Malakath and we really don't deal critical damage. This is only really for the critical healing, so you don't need to pump a lot of points into here. We have Elemental Expert 56 points into here, uh, Spell Erosion 50 points into here, giving us almost 4k spell penetration. We have 81 points in the Master Arms and 23 points in the Staff Expert. Pair this with Solar Barrage, you're getting like a 60 you're getting like a you're getting a 54 percent increased damage to your light and heavy attacks that's nuts crazy damage uh that people don't realize like that's a crazy amount of damage especially with how much penetration we have and then nothing here you can run points in the thaumaturge um but i think i mean the, the only thing that would buff this i think is solar barrage and degeneration you could maybe take a few points out of like here if you don't want any points in Elfborn, but I think Thaumaturge isn't too great. Uh, I would rather have the critical healing than having a little bit more extra damage on my dots. I mean, it's only two dots and the main one is Solar Barrage. So if you want to put a few points in here, you can. And for the red tree, we have 81 points in the Ironclad and 50 points into Resistant. So this gives us right around that 2500 critical resistance that I like. If you're running end pin pieces, obviously drop this down a little bit. But if you're not, then 2500 is the ideal amount. That's best for me. It could be different for you, but that's what I prefer. For the middle tree, we have 43 hardy, 43 elemental defender, 37 thick skinned, and 3 light armor focus. Now this will add a little bit extra resistance to your character. Nothing a crazy amount. You could drop some thick skin because we do have cleanse. But I think having... Um, a little bit of points in here, especially with the dot meta with Malakath and stuff. This is a very, very good CP point to invest in. And we have seven in the quick recovery and six expert defender. This expert defender is low key. Whenever I did the CP is explained video. Um, and then after looking at Templar's light, light attack damage, like the 54% damage increase. I was like, yeah, I need to put a few points in here because people don't realize how much damage light attacks actually do, uh, especially somebody who weaves them, we weaves their attacks often. It really adds a bunch of DPS. So being able to reduce that just a little bit is is crazy. And that's it for the build, guys. Uh, next, I'm going to be showing you some clips that I have on my Magic Templar and Open World. Definitely check those out if you guys want to learn how I play and you know kind of what I'm thinking. But that's it for the build and we'll jump right into it all right so here's the clip that i have it's a uh, kind of fairly long so i'll try to explain it but this guy he's just standing there like a noob so i just come in and try to kill him and then i start focusing the healer uh she they're definitely really really tanky just spam heals like crazy trying to hit him with a radiant to maybe see if you know they're kind of dumb or whatever but i try to keep the pressure up try to keep you know crescent try to keep it up just as much as i can solo barrage and i i guess the other person popped the rest of ultimate yeah they did that's kind of why they survived so more people come up on me so i decided to get some line of sight and get some distance between me and them uh and i spread a few of them out this guy is lagging like really really hard so i try to find the weakest person and he just basically melts in two seconds so i, I kill him and then here comes the lagster right here the stamp lawyer gets really annoying throughout the whole fight but I'll, so i try to secure the kill right here uh, and I don't know why Radiant didn't, didn't go off, but this guy has like Earthborn 17 healers, so he's gonna stay alive. So I kind of peel back, get some more distance. This guy is still on my tail on my tail. I had race against time to get some distance, and I'm trying to kite them to get them to, to get the fast people in front so I can burst them because typically they're a lot squishier. 
So I peel back around and try to just try to make their day annoying. Try to kill them. Try to kill the zerglings. Um, and then so I come back and kill this guy. And then his buddies come back. And then here's actually one of my friends. Uh, he's on a yellow. I'm actually not playing with him. But he just, uh, you know, is out here Xing with me, I guess. So uh, he's doing the same thing I'm doing, trying to lead them away, trying to, you know, try to get a fight, whatever. Um, try not to get the whole, whole group on us, but trying to take out some people. So here I'm just trying to lead them away, trying to get just anybody to come and attack us. Uh, here they actually finally start chasing. So I immediately go to find some different line of sight because I'm out in the middle of open field. Uh, they still don't look like they want to chase um, But this 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 lagster does I think uh, he's <laughs> I don't know what he's doing um, <laughs> He just lags all over the place So I see the other guy he's taking some heat So I decided to get him in there and try to give him give him some help take some pressure off of him These guys are now chasing me pretty good. So I come up the hill Yeah, they definitely chased me really good. I come up the hill to this. I see this house in here and I'm trying to wonder if I should try to burst or not, but I got stunned, so I don't feel like going offensive. So I definitely get into this house. Uh, I actually don't realize it at the time, but you can't go through this crack. It'd be nice if you could, but <laughs> I look like a moron right there. But anyways, so I keep kiting and line of sighting, trying to get in and out of the area, uh, using my terrain the best way I can. Um, you know, go behind a tree, go behind something to make it to where, you know, snipe or whatever can't hit you. Just make it very hard to... To hit you basically is what I'm trying to do. So go in and out. Try to keep my buffs up. Try to keep solar barrage up. And I actually see opportunity here to try to go for a kill. Um pop crescent. Uh, but they have 17 healers, spamming skills, so it's really hard to kill whenever you have a healers. But the healing on this build is actually insane. I try to go for a kill there, but he somehow dodge rolls away or whatever. Uh with radiant. But so we keep cutting a line of siding, and now so I see the yellow guy up there. He's up there to the, in, in the corner. He's, he's back there fighting the other, like the healer and whatnot. So I finally got them separated. And now I can go for some kills on these guys. So I noticed that this level 21 is very, very squishy. But he runs away. So then I just focus the Stamplar. And then I raid at him. And he doesn't heal himself like a moron and dies. So then the other Zerglings come back. I almost kill this level 21. But uh, Earth Core procs and that's a GG. So I'm trying to stop the res. I don't know where the yellow went. I don't know if he died or not. So I feel like I'm all alone. So I'm definitely going to kite hard and try to try to stay alive as long as possible. Trying to kill these guys. Um, I mean, they're just standing outside they're, They don't have any thumbs. So they're trying to like just hold heavy attack on their lightning staff or resto staff to deal damage. Uh, so I, I'm trying to be unpredictable, trying to go inside, outside, trying to make them think I'm going this way and then go a different way. So I, I peel around and around the outside of the house. And now I have there's two people over here. I think they're kind of getting bored chasing me. Two or three people. And get back inside the house and just keep peeling around, trying to figure out who to who to target next. They have the Mr. Lagster right here. So he's obviously not gonna be my target. And I think I just keep kiting. I mean they're putting a bunch of pressure on me. So then I just go completely away from the place. So I go completely away from the house. And just this guy wants to chase. So I want to see how far he'll chase me. Just to peel back. And then now he's all alone. Uh, so I now I go for the burst. Um, and then try to get the kill. And then he cleanses, I guess. And then he gets healed. So which would have been really nice if it got that kill. Uh, but he got healed. So you definitely want to peel them back and try to get them to overextend. That's like, you know, the main, you know, reason. It's the main reason why you even line of sight in the first place is to get them separated so they can't heal each other or, or deal damage to you so they're trying to run away i've tried to focus the healer right here because i see him and he's out and he's you know has his back turned to me but then you know all the zerglings turn around and like look at me menacingly so uh yeah so i peel back and try to see if they're following me to the yellow i i, I didn't know if he was still alive or not but i see him so just kind of wait and see what's going on and it seems like they're trying to run to this keep so I chase them down hardcore. Finally, we get to the other tail end of the group as they run away. And I see the healer and I'm like, gotta, gotta kill them. Gotta kill them because they're the main reason why I can't kill the whole group. Kill the healer. And then the Zerglings are coming back. So I start focusing the Stampler again. Uh, and he goes full turtle mode. And then there's another healer that comes in. 
Uh, and Wraith is attacking that healer while I'm busy with these guys. So I draw my Crescent and kill that guy. I almost, yeah, almost kill him. Radiant Impression didn't take a second time. Uh, so then I start feeling some heat. So I, so I scale back a little bit, get behind the tree. I'm trying to stop this res because if they get this healer up, it's going to suck. Um, and I bash and I'm trying to stay in the fight as long as I can, but I obviously don't want to get bursted. So I bash and then I miss the bash there and the healer gets up. So that really sucks. So then I change plans and scoot back some more, see if they want to chase. This guy chased me too far and is separated and I burst him. Kill him with Radiant. His Earth Core didn't proc too fast. And then I focus the Stamplar because his group is well far away. Let me kill him. So we chase him back up to the keep. Um, and here's these three people uh, trying to focus the healer again. Uh, that's the main object is to focus the healer. There's actually two healers, but this is the most important one because they're the most tanky. So he drops, I think he drops an end cap. Yeah, he dropped end cap there and we get to execute and kills him. And then these guys are running for their dear life. Uh, top in charge, kill this guy. This guy's a tank, the Mr. Lagster. So I just leave him alone and then kill this other healer. That's got like 35 K health and then radiant impression and just keep the pressure up 4k tick and then dead and then you gotta drop some bags but overall you know that's kind of how i play the magplar you know that's that's a, a longer clip but it explains kind of my thought process on what's going on in the fight um if you guys like that sort of thing i can maybe start doing some of that and maybe examining some of my clips maybe start examining some of the bad clips that i have and see what i could have done differently but, you know, that's it for the build video, guys. You know, that's everything, kind of what's going through my head. You know, my build, my concept, um, and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.